feel in India, which is going on, considered as the good 10 innovations, apart from these economic times of today, which is new ideas, you just give me a few 10 ideas around the, around the country, around our own country going on. I thought he may come up with some of the terms which I'm, which I'm aware of, like cloud, mobility, RFID, big data and analytics. So at least, if not all the 10, four or five I would be able to understand. He came up with a list, and I'm just wanting to read that out. I could only hear, your situation may not be as bad as mine, you might be knowing few of this. I could only, I have only... I have only heard one of it, which all of you have heard, which is the UI, the unique identification one. So that is the Nandani Lekhani. from the... Item number two, these are the following up to ten which we have identified as the ten top ten innovative products of the companies, excepting the UID one, Zip Dial, Enos, I am not getting into what these applications are uh, doing, Goons, Iran Scientific Solutions, Mitra Biotech, Interview Street, My Dentist, Ola Cabs, Cloudnut. So these are the nine most innovative, at least to a younger, younger mind, which has appeared, which he brought up as the ten most innovative applications going in the country today. So with this, which we, the Bengal Chamber, we thought that the signature event of the Bengal Chamber, which is considered as one of the rock star IT events of the East at least, till last year, we have focused on specific areas of technology. We focused on cyber security, I think, last year. The year before last, we focused on mobility and cloud computing. Having read all these things, we felt that this year, we will go completely barsar on innovation. We will go completely all pervasive, not specifying any particular areas, and let people from telecom to analytics to software to hardware to healthcare, everybody come in, and anything under the sky, which they can consider as new or innovative, let them come and speak about it. So that's the main theme behind this year's uh, event, that from now onwards, after my speech, from the speaker, second speaker onwards, till the end, we will be having the most of the innovative people of the country and few from abroad who will be speaking, and it is very difficult to specify that innovation pertains to which area, because it could be it could be a conglomeration of multiple ideas and thoughts that they will actually be speaking on. There was also another thought uh, behind uh, doing this uh, seminar and the event. And since it is Bengal Chamber, the event also is Bengal IT Conclave. We also wanted to understand that when we are reading the newspapers, when we are tracking the technological advancements of the country, most of the investments that we are finding the PE, the venture capitalists, or any other corporate money, any FDI flowing in, are flowing into the technology innovative initiatives of people outside West Bengal. Even if there are some very innovative companies, not just an entrepreneurial companies, but well-established companies, most of the products which are coming out of those companies are to a large extent coming out from outside West Bengal. And therefore the thought which crossed our mind is to deliver it also that what is it that we need to do? Are we losing a proximity to the money market? And that is why we are not being able to generate funds for all our initiatives. Are we not so innovative or not so much really aligned to the human necessities which actually make people discover, reinvent that what the human beings of today will need? So are we not open or are we not getting an adequate exposure to the industry's needs or to the human being's life's needs? We were also thinking that whether all the engineering colleges, and why, why engineering? I mean, uh, even the medical colleges or even the MBA colleges or even the general lines also, the colleges should actually be also adding a course, apart from their regular mainstream course from 10 to 5 that they're offering, whether they should be making additional two hours of class in their own stream just to make these younger minds be aware of the disruptive technologies which is coming in. So if it is chemical, if it is, uh, uh, if it is your uh, aerodynamics, if it is mechanical,
mechanical, if it is electrical, whether there should be an extra additional classes being taken just to make them aware of the innovations which are going on around the world in their sector so that these minds of Eastern region, West Bengal, will be more open to what's happening worldwide. So we don't know where the solution is, proximity to the money market, opening up their eyes, making them more aware, uh, of how exactly can we make it happen. But of course there is an interest to hear from the speakers that since most of them have come from outside Bengal, that what is the change that they are seeing in their states or in their countries which we can replicate here and also to make West Bengal come up or the Eastern region come up as the region or state or Calcutta come up as the city of innovation. So that's also or definitely of course an area of our interest which we feel can also be discussed and also be deliberated on. Now with this, I formally declare the Bengal Chamber IT Conclave of 2014 to be open and I also take the deep pleasure in introducing in introducing uh, our, key, uh, our keynote speaker, Mrs. Emmanuel Savarit, Dr. Emmanuel Savarit, User Research and Digital Strategy Director of Analyze Concept Limited UK, who will be speaking on quantitative and qualitative research approaches and benefits in the global world of IT from analytics to user experience. Now in this context, Dr. Savrit, I must also say that I know I can see a couple of my friends here who have been deliberating upon a theme whether Calcutta in 10 years from now can be considered, can be declared as a city of analytics. And if we like all other cities in the world, many of the many cities in the world are associated with some product or something like with a film festival or with car manufacturing or with IT product producing. So can Calcutta likewise be also considered, declared as a city of analytics? And we also have a desire to do an analytics conclave two, three months later where we would really want to establish Calcutta as a city of analytics if possible. So your introduction to this subject will be very, very useful and timely. With this, I welcome you to the stage, Dr. Sarah. Yeah. Good evening. It's a great pleasure to be here today. So I'm coming from London, but I'm French, so you can, uh, I can apologize for my accent, so I hope you will be able to understand what I'm saying. Uh, today I'm going to bring you some new concepts and something which is quite new to the IT world, uh, even in Europe and uh, over in the West or in uh, America, it's something which is quite new, so it's quite uh, interesting to present it to you too. So I'm going to go through different points, I need a general introduction, and then after I'm going to explain why we need to do research, and what it is really, and uh, when do you have to do it, and which method to use, and uh, also there is some meat you need to come across and just try to forget them because they are not uh, the reality. And we go through some conclusion and then in, if I've got time I will give you two or three words of what I'm doing and how we do it. Um, so I'm going to start with some um, government, like user experience for a digital strategy should be led by a proven research methodology and not by IT design solution architects. So it's something which is very important and you take that into consideration because when you develop a product, everything now is digital. So it's very important to take everything into consideration before you start building a new system. So now everything is moving digital. We are moving to a new uh, era where everything is moving, right? everything is really moving digital. You have to remove the paper, you remove the calculator and you put everything on a computer and on a system. So you need to make sure it's going to meet the customer requirement. It's not only limited to the business requirement and the functional requirement. It needs also to be taken into consideration what the end user wants. So new experience, people who never used to be on digital devices now are and use the digital devices. They have to get used to it and they need to have something which is very intuitive to them. So that you really need to take that into consideration. So research is going to be there to help you to make this gap between the functionality, what needs to be done, and what is going to be intuitive and needed by the end user. So I'm talking about the Indian market. There is a huge evolution. We have also in Europe an evolution, but it's moving even 
more and more, but with you it's moving so fast. So the difference is like when you see the number of Indian people who are using internet, you can see between 2001 up to 2014, there is a huge difference. And now the smartphone, it's like a revolution. Everyone is moving with their iPhone, and you start for very little in 2014, but look what it's going to be in 2020. So you really need to take into consideration what is going to be the new technology used for communication and for any use on a daily life. So not only by using technology, social media, in a leisure point of view, but also in a professional environment. So that is very important. So what is research? So you put the plain English definition. It's uh, studying real people to understand who they are, what they need, and how they use something. That's the plain definition of research. In the industry, in IT user experience, we said comprise a method for gaining insight into user needs and behavior from real end user. So you need to take into consideration that real end user are the key. If you understand what they want, what they need, because the ch behavior is changing at the moment, because they change and use their social media, and they have expectations. If they use Facebook, Twitter, they will expect to have some functionality on their any tool they are working with. So you need to take really that into consideration. It's moving even if you think, oh, but that's work, doesn't matter, it can be a platform which just wants something functional. It's not good enough. People will go for something which is usable, friendly, easy, uh, very nice to, to use, and very intuitive. And on top of that, you need to have all the functionality and meet the business requirements. So that's very important to take that into consideration. So why do research? What's happened is one in three projects fail to meet the customer expectation. So what do you do if your product is not uh, meeting the customer expectation? People are not going to buy it. They will try, and after a while they are going to stop buying if we do a membership or whatever. So if you don't meet the customer expectation, it's going straight to a failure. Maybe not straight away, but one month, two months, one year. What you want when you develop a product is to have it for a long time. And actually your customer are happy and they keep renewing and rebuying, getting the update, download the new version, or buying or continue buying the subscription is what you want. Making change costs money. So if you already start a, pr a platform and it's, you have to make changes because you realize it's not meeting the customer expectation. It's going to cost you money to rebuild it or to build on top of something you already have. And understand your customer is fundamental. You need to understand everything they need and also their behavior, how they use it, how they use it in their working environment. It's very important. So fitting in events a small amount of research could save you in the long term a lot of money. So you don't have to rebuild something or try to find a new solution because actually it's not meeting the customer expectation any. So when do you have to do research? You can do it at several times. You can do it before you develop the concept, just when you have an idea, you go to ID and say, hmm, I need to find out. What do I need to find out? To have competitors. Is there any space for me to do some, some work in this area? What are the potential clients? What do they do? What do they want? Um, which functionality are needed to meet the requirement? At which level of, uh, of information they need to have? They may not need all. You can probably compute everything, but they may not need all the information. Don't give them too much information if they don't want it. Just give them what they really want. So what is important is to do before you start doing the, the concept, you, before you start designing, when I mean designing in terms of the concept and the functionality and all the algorithm to do it. You can test all that to see if it's working. And then after you can start, before you start developing it, or you go to prototype or beta version, so you can start practicing and see how it's working. But the most, most important thing, you just test it and do research before you launch your product because you can identify any bugs, anything which is not working, anything which is may not meet the customer expectation, you need to find it before it's released. Because now the tolerance on a new product, digital product, is so little, and the new generation, don't even think about it, three second tolerance, if they can't do it, they will never use it again. So especially the new generation, you give them an app, I'm testing app with a new, man, 20 years old boy, typically, and they will try to say, oh, no, no, no. Uh, I don't like it, you know, it doesn't do what I like, it's too complicated, it takes too long, I will never buy it, I will never download, even if it's free, I will never download this application. Because they are your customer, they are 20, 18, 15 years old, but they are going to be your customer tomorrow. And tomorrow is really tomorrow, so that's very important to take that into consideration. 
So which method to use? There is so many research methodologies. There is the quantitative methodology that everyone knows. The analytics, the survey, you validate the feedback of your customer, so that's fine. But the qualitative research is something which not many people are using it. Or they may use it, but independently. Or they will use the analytics or the quantitative independently. All the research methodology needs to be used together. One method at a time, depending on the research question. Very important. So the qualitative method is going to identify the reality of the world. What do your customer want? It's not by doing a survey you will find out that. You will find it by spending time with your end user. If it's a working environment, you need to spend time in the working environment and to do some ethnographic work, what we call contextual inquiry. You spend time with them, you understand their pattern, their habits, their behavior, which type of information they need, which type of tool they need, at which, at which moment, which moment they need it. When you do that, you've got a good understanding of several uh, users. And for example, I'll give you an example. I was working for Thomson Reuters and I was looking at traders for the financial platform. Traders in commodities, so uh, carbon, emission, energy, agriculture, metro, all those uh, very complicated uh, uh, issues. I spent time and day with them, understanding their working environment every day. What was their routine, the process, what did they do, which type of information they needed which tools they were using, and why they were using 15 tools in one day. They need one. If you can have one with all the information in one place, they will save them so much time. What you want to understand is what would change their life to make their process and their uh, life easier, to be more productive. You optimize the process, understand all their requirements, optimize the process in one single platform, would be the ideal world for them. And not only that, they need to have the right information at the right time. Not all the information all day long. At a certain time, they need a certain type of information. So when we understand all the requirements, what is needed, we also spend some time to try to understand what is the possibility of it. Because we can't do everything or how long it takes to build it. So after we take a balance between the business requirement, the technical requirement, and the end user requirement. When we look at all that together, then after you can prepare a proposal of something which is going to be usable. And you're not just going to build it. You're going to start building it, testing it, improve it, testing it, improve it, put it in front of users, get the feedback from the user, be tested. You know, it's a whole ongoing process because anything like a search button, you go to search and you want to have an auto-suggestion of your, your outcome. A trader is looking for a price of a certain uh, commodity at the moment T. You need to it by putting few words, be able to find the risk they want. So even just the search button was a huge amount of research testing to understand how the thing could be improved. Is it on the right? Is it on the left? You know, what is easier for them to, to, to see? Because they get so many information, they are in front of a screen all day long. They need something which is usable, nice to look at, so they don't get tired to be in front of it. They can't have like flashing images or some noise and things like that, which is going to be disturbing. They are everybody working in open space now, so it should be discreet. It's not going to to, 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 to be a problem for the person working next, next to them. So that's very important. So all those things could be done qualitatively. And then you can do some quantitative, you know? You will do the quantitative at the moment where you want to get feedback. You will get probably 20 participants where you do the qualitative. And then also you, can, you need to have a larger number of, of participants to validate, to be statistically valid. So then also you can do a survey just to make sure it's validating your findings. So to do the qualitative first, to find all the reality of the world, and then validate with quantitative. Same thing, the analytics, they are only giving you what's happening. Why? How? You've got no idea. It's telling you there is this number of visits on your platform at this moment. They are coming from this page, and after the main link to the other page, we don't have everything. You just know the numbers. You don't know why they are coming, which are the information they are looking for. So you need to, if you realize that there is some issue. I've got an example. I was working for Betfair, the gaming online gaming company in London. And we were going to rebuild like my account. And I said to them, oh, uh, we are going to rebuild my account. Give me the analytics. You know, I want to see what is the, it's very important. I want to see what is the activity on this section of the site. So we look at the activity that I don't understand. There is no activity where you put money, where you withdraw money. For a gaming website, I didn't understand. You know, they need to put their money at some point, and they need to retrieve their money at some point. So I went to see the financial services, and I said, okay, so they can't put the money, they can't withdraw the money, or they can, but they, they don't do it. 
What is the other route actually if well, they can do it? So there they can do it through the call center. So I went to the call center, I did a focus group with the operator, asked them to qualitative the research. And then what is the issue? And they said to me, oh, but uh, they call most of the time because they can't put their new credit card when one is expired because uh, they've got three possibilities and when you read the three, after you have stock. Okay, so I went to the legal department and said, what is this issue? Because why they can't remove their, their, their card if it expires? They said, oh, it's money laundry. So we need to be protected and be very careful. So they tried to find a solution so when people had a card and just expired, they could delay this car, they're leaving the space to add a new car. Problem solved. Don't have to rebuild the site. You just try to find a little issue and try to solve this issue. And that could only be found out with the addition of all the different methodology. So you do the quant, the, the data analysis, analysis, you can see something is not working properly. Then after you get the people, you do qualitative and give the operator. I also listen to some calls and I got also the quantitative data of the call allocation, which type of call it was. <laughs> so you put everything together, you see there is a correlation between the type of call, credit card, and the, the problem with the site where you don't have a credit card. There is no traffic on that. So you find the, the answer by speaking to the people, understanding what is the issue. And then after, to make sure we were right, we spend some time with the end user. Well, then what is the worst thing with the site? Oh, we can't put a cart in. When it's, we've got a big problem with the cart. So we decided to do a survey, and it was validated that everybody had issues with the cart. So it's a very important thing to find, and not only the analytic is going to do it. So what we have, that's uh, the type of methodology we can use. So that's more the way of collecting the data. So we have the analytics. We've got the survey questionnaire, customer feedback, user testing, very important, one-to-one -one interaction in front of the screen, we record the activity, we have every question, we've got the scenario, and we give them some tasks to make sure they can do it. We get all their feedback from the activity, but also their verbal feedback when they speak. They say, oh, they can't do something, and they say, oh, that's fine, that's fine. Actually, no, the speech doesn't meet the, the activity. So you make sure you've got the quality between the verbal outcome, and also the activity on the screen. We do focus group, interviews, especially in preconceived development, it's about getting to do the interview. Contextually correct to be in the place where people are working, especially if you build the software for business, it's very important. And competitor review. Is there someone doing something almost similar? Or is there something is there? Yeah, the competitor and you realize actually they don't do this. Maybe they need some room to develop the business in that direction. So that's all those methods you can use really to understand where there is room for your business and also to make sure your product is going to meet the customer expectations. So when to do it? Pre-concept development, interview, focus group, conceptual uh, inquiry, competitive review analysis. During the development and the design, so let's not talk too much about the design because well, the design in Europe is a big thing, you know, to embellish and to make things all around design and make pretty. They make such a big mistake in the UK recently because everyone is spending so much money on design and they don't care about the functionality. So I think the design should be a bit more, it's here to embellish, but it should not be.